So it is Elizabeth back again with another video for you guys. This is going to be a really quick video. I just kind of wanted to get out, get out this week. Um, and it's kind of going to go along with some other videos that I've done in the past. Uh, videos about breastfeeding, videos about um, increasing your milk supply naturally or helping your milk supply naturally. Um, videos about that are to come, about going back to work, and videos about exclusive pumping. So this is kind of um, a supplemental video, kind of a, a how-to video. And this video is going to be all about paste bottle feeding. Woo! So... I know it's exciting stuff. Um, I have my very good robot baby friend, Baby Carter, here to help me demonstrate what we're going to be doing with paste bottle feeding because my one year old. Oh, girlfriend's excited. I also did not realize she was on, so let me turn her off because I don't really. I don't really want her participating um, so much in the robot baby way as just as in a baby way. Um, so we're gonna go over, I'm gonna show you guys how to paste bottle feed. And I just kinda wanna go over what is paste bottle feeding, why are we doing it? So paste bottle feeding is a way to give a baby a bottle that most mimics the flow of the breast. So I think a lot of times we traditionally see people getting a bottle, and there is, this is just cow's milk, I didn't wanna be wasteful, but um, dumping a bottle in, and I'm gonna show you guys like this, just like poured over like that. Now. If I take this bottle and I turn it over, milk is just dumping out. If you have a baby that you're lying horizontally, just like this napkin, and you put the bottle in its mouth, this is a slow flow nipple, okay? Both of my kids have only ever taken slow flow nipples the whole time that they've been bottle fed and bottle and breastfed. Look at that, that's slow flow. That's a size one, I don't think this is a preemie, but still. Now, riddle me this. If you are at daycare and you get a bottle and it gets dumped into you like this, you're gonna be drinking way faster than on the breast and you're gonna be putting in way less work than a baby has to put on, on the breast. This might be what mama's letdown looks like, but then eventually, baby's gonna have to do some work to get the rest of that milk out, especially that really good, delicious, um, fat-packed hind milk. Although, you know, I know there is some uh, debate on like fore milk versus hind milk, is it really a thing? What we know is milk gets fattier as those uh, fat globules come out as the milk continues to flow. So babies are gonna have to work harder to get that nice fatty milk at the end. And a baby who is being not paste bottle fed and just getting a bottle dumped into it like this, the baby's not gonna wanna work when it gets back to the boob. So one thing that's important about paste bottle feeding and one reason why we practice paste bottle feeding with babies who are breastfed and babies who are exclusively bottle and formula fed is because it is more reminiscent of the breast. And the breast turns on and off like a faucet and it doesn't turn on like you turning on the hose full blast, like dumping a bottle in does to a baby. So when we practice paste bottle feeding, it is to mimic the natural way babies are meant to take food in, which is from the breast. And we want to mimic that for a whole host of reasons. So if you are <laughs> bottle feeding because you're separated from your baby, we want to mimic what uh, the baby will have to do when it gets back to the breast, when it has to work a little bit harder for its meal. We also want to mimic um, how much milk the baby would be getting at the breast because when a baby normally spends 20 minutes for a full meal, but if it's getting, I'm just gonna keep doing this, getting the bottle dumped into it like this and finishes in five, the baby's brain and its tummy aren't gonna have that connection quick enough to be like, oh, I'm full. Baby's still gonna be showing hunger cues because baby is used to nursing for longer and its mind hasn't quite wrapped around the fact that it's full because it downed four ounces of milk in five minutes. And so then you've got daycare, your childcare provider, grandma, whoever saying, oh, we need more milk, baby needs more milk. And if baby's getting formula, yes, you do need to increase the amount of formula that they're getting as they get older. But breastfeeding babies actually tend to kind of cap out at around 32 ounces a day. Some babies never get up to that. Some babies need a little bit more, obviously, because not all babies are gonna read the textbook and know the averages. But um, 
yeah, so when you're feeding a baby like that, they're not going to be able to, to feel like their hunger is satiated and they're going to be asking for more food. Then they're going to get more food and then they're going to have even more of a belly ache. They're going to be even more upset, which leads us to a fussier baby. So we do pace bottle feeding to make sure that babies um, do not overeat. We do pace bottle feeding to make sure that moms aren't feeling pressured to supply more milk than the baby needs because they're being overfed uh, because the baby isn't able to listen to its satiated cues. And we do pace bottle feeding to mimic the flow of the breasts so that baby can easily transition between breast and bottle. Um, so to do pace bottle feeding, you need a baby and a bottle. Uh, we recommend starting with the, a, a slow flow nipple, either the newborn or the preemie, and honestly never going beyond that. There are going to be some kids who you're having trouble getting them to take a bottle and sometimes going up helps, but in general, um, my kids have always been on stage one nipples and have never gone up and both of them have gotten breast and bottle. Um, my son I exclusively pump for now but in the beginning he was going back and forth between breast and bottle and my daughter I breastfed for 22 months and she went back and forth between breast and bottle. So you want a slow flow nipple. Um, the, these bottles uh, help with gas and colic. I never really had gassy colic babies but these are just the bottles that we were given. These are the bottles that we use. If you have a gassy colicky baby, these bottles can be helpful. The only thing about the Dr. Browns is that they are a little bit more apt to leak um, and they have a lot of pieces to be washed. My daughter, the bottle that she took was a MAM bottle because that's the pacifier that she took. I had trouble getting her to take a bottle before I went back to work. So I can do a video on uh, getting stubborn babies to take bottles too, giving all my uh, personal feedback and experience on that. But yes, so. That is why we paste bottle feed. Now paste bottle feeding, like I said, is a way to mimic how a baby would naturally eat at the breast. So some things to keep in mind when, when you are bottle feeding a breastfed infant or uh, giving a baby breast milk in a bottle. Babies only need an ounce to 1.25 ounces for hours that they are away from mama. So most babies aren't gonna take a bottle that has more than four or five ounces in it. And that's kind of the max. You might have a baby who every couple of hours just wants two ounces just how, like how they would feed on mom and that is okay but just making sure when you are sending milk to your daycare that you're I would give them more smaller bottles as opposed to bigger bottles with more in it because if you are giving them four ounce bottles and then the baby's not finishing it uh depending on the regulations for your state and whatever they have to do they might end up throwing away milk which as we all know is um a tragedy so bottles with a little bit less milk in them, but more of them might be more beneficial because they can always give them four ounces out of two different bottles, but if they're only taking three and you've given them four ounces, then they have to throw away that um, final ounce. So here is baby Carter, obviously a bit more rigid than a newborn, but Holden was is asleep and probably would not want to participate in this. He honestly pace feeds himself now. Um, when I give him a bottle, like before he goes to bed, he'll take a few sips, pop it out, put his bink in. So he does it himself. He's a smart kid. But anyway, so here is baby Carter right here. Um, and the first thing with pace bottle feeding is positioning. So we want babies to be in a more upright position. Um, a lot of times what I would do with Holden, let me see if I can kind of move over here is I would have him up against my leg like this so he was a little bit more upright because again horizontal and the bottle vertical is going to be dumping so we want babies to be a little bit more upright however you want to sit them that is comfortable um also if they are going to be going back and forth between the breasts having them nice and close to uh, the breast in a, a breastfeeding position can be helpful but just a little bit more upright and then you never, ever, ever want to shove a bottle in a baby's mouth, okay? We always want to initiate a latch with the baby because we want them to be telling us that they're hungry, not us to be aggressively shoving a bottle in their mouth. So just like with the nipple, you just wanna tickle, 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 and wait for baby to open. And then what you're gonna do is have just enough milk in the teat to cover the hole. Now, a lot of people are like, oh, but what if my baby gets air? Well, at the breast, baby gets a little bit of air to it. That is why we burp a baby. Um, but just have enough milk in the teat to cover it. Baby has latched on and baby suckles. And then just 
pay attention to baby's cues. If baby's fighting, if the flow seems too fast, bring it back a little bit. Um, a few other ways that some people like to pace bottle feed is to do that, but then after, you know, five to eight sucks, take the bottle out and then repeat the process. One thing that is important to note with pace bottle feeding is that it should take about the same amount of time the baby takes at the breast. And you want to burp every like half ounce or so and then halfway through the feeding, just like you would do at the breast, switch sides so that you're doing it on the other side. So I'm just going to show you. We're tickling. We're getting baby to open. Baby's latching on. And you want to get, just like the breast, the whole teat in the mouth um, and let baby suckle. And if baby isn't wanting to finish the last fourth an ounce of a bottle, the last ounce, we do not force a baby to eat if they are not telling us that they're not hungry. I know it is painful to waste breast milk. That's why I recommend sending smaller portions uh, to a daycare provider, but do not force a baby to eat that's not hungry. After baby's done eating, it's really important. Obviously we're burping in between, but to give them a good burp, get all those burps out. And then if baby is still seeming hungry, go ahead and offer a pacifier or a finger to suck on, walk around, some shushing. Let baby's brain get that it has food in it. Um, again, we know that babies don't just suckle at the breast for nutrients, they can suckle uh, for comfort as well. So offering a pacifier after they finish eating can be comforting. Give them 20, 30 minutes to calm down. And then if they're still acting hungry after that, you could certainly offer another half an ounce. Sometimes babies are going through growth spurts and they need a little bit more food. But in general, we want to keep it to that one to 1.25 an hour rule. Thank you for your help, baby Carter. Um, so I hope that this video has been helpful, um, just kind of explaining what is pace bottle feeding while we're doing it, a little demonstration. I know there's other videos on YouTube that have real babies. Unfortunately, I do not currently have access to a newborn um, or a smaller baby, which I would show you how to pace bottle feed. But I hope that this video was helpful, getting all that information in one place. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe and all that other fun YouTube stuff. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Bye, guys.